whole family. How many of you guys know him as Lord? That he's just not Lord, but he's he's Lord over all. Come on, anybody know him as the cornerstone today? Come on, anybody grateful in here? I just wonder. Come on. It's okay. Come on, let's. Anybody know him as the cornerstone? In other words, the cornerstone. That everything that's been built in your life, it can only withstand the blows of the life if it's connected to the cornerstone. So if the cornerstone is not, it's not there, everything begins to tumble down. But we praise Jesus Christ today that he is indeed your, your cornerstone. If I can say it this way before we transition, as Ryan was leading us, it, it took me back to Matthews 21. And, and Jesus saying this, he, he was quoting Psalms in the, in the Old Testament. He said, Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is what the Lord has done. And it is wonderful in our eyes. The stone that they rejected, the stone that they put the crown on, the stone that they begin to cast away, the one that was last has become first. I just wonder if anybody in here is grateful and appreciated that the one that was rejected, he is the cornerstone. He is the rock in your life today. If it wasn't for the cornerstone, my God, where would we be right now? So I have to praise him. I have to lift up my voice. I had to begin to say, thank God for a cornerstone because life comes and life will bring its blows. But look at us now. We are still here. You are still standing because there is a cornerstone just, just because they rejected it. Just because they rejected this. But I look at my story when I was rejected, when you were rejected, but you are still standing now because you are placed on a cornerstone is there anybody with me today that would begin to praise our Jesus Christ, begin to lift up our name because God is faithful. He is worthy to be praised. He is indeed your cornerstone. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for being a cornerstone. Our story is still moving forward because of a cornerstone. Let the enemy continue to whisper to you. But we're raising up a voice in this season to say, I got a cornerstone in my corner. You might have knocked me down before, but I'm recognizing that there's a rock underneath me. I'm recognizing that there's a pillar underneath me. And just because you throw a blow, you might not have been introduced to this cornerstone. It withstand everything. It withstand the blows from Lucifer. It withstand the death and the life. It has no Stay. Oh, death, where is your sting? Woo. We overcame everything. So what you're going through right now, God has said, I can overcome that as well. I overcame death for you. I overcame that for you. I am your cornerstone. So when I look at healing in my life, when I look at deliverance in my life, when I look at I need a breakthrough in my life, I say my God is faithful to see me through because he is indeed my my cornerstone. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Not, not this year, devil. Come on, somebody. Not this year. I'm introducing myself back to the cornerstone. I'm not the cornerstone. You got to tell yourself, I'm not the cornerstone. He's the cornerstone. I thank God that I don't have to be the cornerstone. My wisdom don't have to be the cornerstone. My connections in life don't have to be the cornerstone. As long as I got King Jesus in my life, everything's going to be all right. So you got to tell yourself, encourage yourself today to say, as long as I got King Jesus in my life, my family going to be all right. My health is going to be all right. My finances is going to be all right. This church is going to be all right. Because as long as we got King Jesus, everything's going to be all right. We got a cornerstone. 
We got a cornerstone. We got a cornerstone. You got a cornerstone. The Bible says that the, that, that, that the just man may fall seven times. But I thank God that the just man didn't stay there. That the just man had a bounce back in the spirit. That the just man had a cornerstone to get back up. I thank God that I can look at my life where I fell, where I stumbled, where I didn't get it right. And the enemy thought I was down. But then I recognized that I got a cornerstone. I got something to bounce me back. I got something to get me back on my feet. I have something to keep moving, to keep trusting, to keep increasing my faith. I have a cornerstone. You have a cornerstone. The enemy will try to whisper to you that the ground that you are on is sinking sand. But be encouraged today that you are on a firm foundation. Don't allow the enemy to trick you no more. Just because storms may come, you are on a firm foundation. Just because life may have its twists and its turns, but understand when you put your trust and your faith in your God, he will always see you through. He will always cover you. Your foundation is firm. Your foundation is not seeking sand. Your theology, your doctrine, your belief, come on somebody, is not seeking sand. It is placed on the love of Jesus Christ. And are you telling me that Jesus doesn't and love you? Are you telling me that Jesus is not crazy about you? Are you telling me? Because I want to remind you he's deeply in love with you. You are the apple of his eye. Are you kidding me? The father sees you and he has belief in you. He sees you as an overcomer. Receive his love today. He is your firm foundation. It's your firm foundation. Can I, can I read this to you? I want to I want to go to Joshua, continue to stand. I want to, because God is speaking. Joshua 3, verse 17. How many of you guys believe today that you have crossed over? And in, in, in this season, how many do you believe we crossed over? That, 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 that you have stepped, hear me, by faith you have stepped in something greater you have stepped in to the next glory. God has something better for you. By faith, you are decreeing that. That's just not for January. But his love is faithful. His love is every other door. When he's speaking to you, this is just not a new year type of message. No, no, God is moving you into something greater. Joshua 3:17. It says this, the priest carrying the Ark of the Lord's Covenant stood, come on somebody, stood firmly on dry ground. In the middle, somebody say in the middle, in the middle of the Jordan. I'm always, I'm interested because God always shows itself in the middle. You may feel like you're in the middle of your story. You may feel that you're in a season that you're waiting for God to do something. And I'm just here to encourage you today that God will always show himself in the middle. In the middle of your story, God will show up. In the middle, when you need a breakthrough, God will show up. That you're still planted on firm foundation. Right in the middle, your breakthrough can come. Your testimony can come. God will show himself in the middle, in the middle of the Jordan, while all Israel crossed on dry ground Hallelujah. until the entire nation yeah. had finished crossing the Jordan. I'm into, this, this, this blows my mind that the entire nation was able to cross over because certain people decided to be a sacrifice. 
that, our, that each and every last one of them was able to participate, but they were only able to participate because some individual decided to stand in the gap. I believe that God, that you can look at the stories in your life that you didn't have no, you didn't know what they meant. You didn't know what you were going through. You didn't understand it. You didn't, why am I going through this God? And God is here to remind you that you can be like one of the 12 priests, my God. That's standing in the middle of the Jordan for your family, my God, to cross over, for your friends to cross over, so your neighbors to cross over, so your co-workers can cross over. Could it be that God has been using you to stand in the middle of the gap so that not only you and your family will cross over, but generations are getting ready to cross over? Could it be that God is having you to stand in the middle of the gap? You may feel like you're in the middle of the gap right now and I'm just here to encourage you today while I'm encouraging myself right now stand in the gap stand in the gap Stand in the gap. Don't no, you on dry ground. I know you see the rivers on side to side, but I'm here to let you know stand in the gap. Why? Because you are helping somebody cross over. You are helping somebody be introduced to Jesus. You are helping somebody be lifted into his kingdom. Stand in the gap. And then he goes into verse one. I'm going to let you sit down soon, I, I promise. After the entire nation, verse 4 and 1, after the entire nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord spoke to Joshua, choose 12 men, choose 12 men from the people, one man for each tribe, and command them, take 12 stones. From this place in the middle of the Jordan where the priests are standing, carry them with you and set them down at the place where you spend the night. So Joshua summoned the 12 men he had selected from the Israelites, one man from each tribe, and he said to them, go across to the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of the Jordan. Each of you lift a stone onto his shoulder, one for each of the Israelites' tribe, so that this will be a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask, come on, what do these stones mean? You should tell them. The water of the Jordan was cut off in front of the Ark of the Lord's Covenant. That's right. When it crossed the Jordan, the Jordan's water was cut off. Therefore, these stones will always be a memorial for the Israelites. While you're taking your seats, family, I want you to even turn to your left and then turn to your right. Just let your neighbor know. Share your story. Share your story. Come on, choose, 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 choose your next option. Share your story. Share your story. As you're taking your seat, share your story. There's power in your story. Come on, somebody. There's deliverance in your story. Share your story. Even for this church, how many of you guys will agree this church has amazing story? Yes, sir. Amen. As you can direct your attentions towards the screen. We're just getting started, family. As we link arms, this is a linking arms and stepping into his newness. And understanding the more we link together, the more we share his story, the more we begin to embrace our story. Embrace your yes. Don't withhold your yes. Embrace it. Become one with it. I believe that for the Celebration DC family that it's been clear that, that God wants to take us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And that it requires to shift gears to engage where the power is. It takes faith for us to understand that this is the beginning of what God desires to do. This is a new chapter of what it is that God desires to do through Celebration DC. And he's just getting started. Come on, 
family. I mean, even know that he's just getting started. Come on, we might have been in the middle, but he, we are just getting started. Come on. We are just getting started. You guys have stayed in the gap so that others will cross over. We are just getting started. Share your story. God is moving in your life. Begin to release your testimony. Share your story, family. Being even reminded right now in Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work, come on, a good work, a good work. If it's not good in your life yet, here's what I want to tell you. Don't give up because God is working. If he who begins a good work, we are confident that he will finish it. If it's not good yet, Julius, it just lets me know that he's not done yet. If it has to turn good because God said it in his word, he who began a good work, if it's not good yet in your life, if the breakthrough didn't come yet, if you don't have the testimony yet, that's just a clear reminder that he's still working on it, that he's still turning it into your good for his kingdom, for his purpose. If it's not good yet, thank God I just know that you're still working. So that in this series, family, I, 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 I'm, I'm loving, I'm, as we launch into a new series, I really do believe this with all my heart, that this series is going to change your life. Yes. That in this series, the series is called Share Your Story. For the next few weeks, um, I, just wanna, I just want you to lean in with an open heart, with an open mind, that there's beauty in your story. Yes. Maybe the enemy has been whispering to you, that your story doesn't matter. Hear me. This series is for you. Maybe you've been, maybe you don't believe that your story has any value. This series is for you. Maybe you feel like you're in the middle of a journey. This series is for you. Maybe you feel like your faith is being tested. This series is for you. This series is for each and every one of us that's in this room right now. And for our online family, this series is for you. Because God has a beautiful story that God is writing. He has included all of us in this beautiful story that he is writing. But the enemy would love to whisper to you over and over and especially in isolation. So your story is just ordinary. Your story is small. Your story has so many missteps. How can God even use that? Your story comes from dysfunctional. How can God even use that? But I'm learning more and more in this season. I just spent time with God, even with my own story. That God is saying one of the bravest things you can do is to learn how to embrace and own your story. Because the enemy will love to just shame your story and put it away and just rebuke it, and that's not me, and I can't nobody else know that I have gone through that. But when you begin to get power overcoming your story, the enemy can't use it against you no more. This is what God and I have been going through, but God has taken my story and is using it as fuel in my journey to continue to go after the very thing that he has called me to. Could it be that my story is getting ready to lead somebody to Christ? Could it be that my story is a bridgeway for somebody to make their way into the kingdom? Could it be that my story is getting ready to lead somebody to a deeper level of faith? See, the enemy would love to say that your story is not good enough. But when we learn it, hear this, I want to say this, we don't, you don't have to embrace your story or find, I say this way, you don't have to find your identity in your story. Because a lot of us, it could be there's some horrific things in our story. And I don't want to identify myself with that. We're not teaching that today. We don't identify it, but here's what we do. We can recognize God's DNA all over our story. 
that God has been faithful there yes. and he will be faithful over there. Yes. When you look at your story, you say, God, I seen you do it back then. So I know you can do it again. Yes. Your story gives you fuel to continue to trust God. Yes. Embrace your story. You don't have to identify with it because your identity comes from Christ. Yes. Your identity is found in Christ. But if you look closely, you can see that Christ has been walking with you all this time. That's the beauty of your, sto your story. Excuse me. That's the beauty of your story. So even when we look at this text right here with Joshua and the Israelites, a beautiful text. We get to see that they're crossing over into the promised land. The promised land, something that they were waiting 40 years for. A lot of us, if you like me, after one day, I'm frustrated. God, where's my breakthrough? Come on, God. You got a microwave or, you know, air fry, because you like my son likes to air fry. Air fry is like the new microwave generation. You got a microwave type of faith. After one day, after one week, 40 years that they've been waiting to step into the very thing that God has called them to. See, the promised land represents, for them, it was a physical blessing. See, we have crossing overs in our promised land, but they are spiritual yes. blessings. And they were waiting and they have the opportunity to step in the very thing that God has been calling them. But what I love about it is that God had to get Egypt out of them yes. in order for them to step into the very thing that he was calling them to. Could it be that some of us, we still got a little bit of Egypt inside of us yes. from our past? That even to the, to the degree that they wanted to actually return back to the past, return back to familiarity, return back to the thing they were used to for all of their life. When God is looking to shift you into something new, you will always feel a tug from the past to pull you back into what you used to do. But in this season, hear me, family, you have the strength to step into what God has called you to. Do not allow your past to pull you back to, but allow your story to to be fueled to step into what God is calling you to. The enemy will always try to slip through your past as that window, as that door to continue to say, you remember how you used to act? You remember how you used to talk? Remember how you used to dress? Remember how this happened in your family? The enemy will always try to slip through your past to begin to bring you down. But when you begin to own your story, that doorway gets shut and now you are an overcomer. And now you begin to use your story for the benefit of the kingdom of God. That there's beauty in that. And, then, and I love this question. They had a question. And I love what, 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 what God told them. He said in verse 4, and he said, he said, actually verse 5, and he said, Go across the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of the Jordan. And said, each of you, Lift a stone unto his shoulder, one for each of the Israelite tribes, so that this would be a sign among you. Here we go. In the future, when your children ask, what do these stones mean to you? What do these stones mean to you? What do these stones? See, see, a stone, here it is, a stone is a monument of stones was frequently used to remind future generations about God's salvation and his grace towards his people. A sign to remind his people that he did it over there and he can do it again. A stone represents your story. Each and every one of us that's in this room and our online family, you have a stone. Yes. Your stone is your story. You have a stone. You have a story. And now when your children come up and your generation that's behind you come up, they're going to ask you, what does this story mean? What does this story mean? When my sons come up and then his sons and sons come up, I love it that it says this. It says you should tell them. That's the action with your story. See, maybe you've been living a life where you haven't been telling your story. 
You haven't been sharing your story. But God is saying here to them that in this season, when the generations that's coming up after you, you need to tell God, you need to tell his people that God has been faithful in your life. You need to tell about these stones that God delivered me. You need to tell this story when I'm even looking at my own life, when I'm looking at my wife and my son, that she has an amazing story that you have to tell your story, that the enemy thought both of you guys wasn't going to make it when your blood pressure was up and his blood pressure was dropping, that the devil thought he was going to have his way, but God stepped in. You have a story because the enemy thought they wasn't going to be here. But when I wake up each day in my life, I see stones in my life that I got to give God praise because the enemy would have tried to take away the stones from me. But God's faithfulness, God's trustworthy, that God covered them. And now they are here today and we have one thing to do. Go tell somebody. Go tell somebody. You have stones. God has given you stones. You have a story. Go tell somebody. Why? Because your story matters. Why? Because your story matters. If you're taking notes, I want to give you some application real quick. Why? Because your story matters. Your story reminds you of his faithfulness. When you begin to look at your history, your story reminds you that God has been faithful in your life. See, Psalms 119 verses 90 says this. It says, your faithfulness is for all generations. You establish the earth and it stands firm. Your faithfulness is just not for mom's and grandma's generation. His faithfulness is not just for biblical times. His faithfulness is faithful for all generations. So that means right now I'm being encouraged to know that, you know what, God, when you did it back then, even in this generation, you can do it again. That even in my son's generation, you can do it again. That even in my son's, son's, son's generation, he is still doing it again. What that does, it increases my knowledge. It increases the revelation that I have from God. But most importantly, it increases my faith to understand that we serve a God that who's the same back then. He's the same right now. And he's the same forevermore. So despite what you may be going through right now, when you look into his word and you see that God was faithful of making him go through the Red Sea and crossing over the Jordan River and removing the mountain out of their way and lets me know, God, you can do it again. God, you can do it again. So for every blow that comes your way, God, I know you can do it again. And God, I know you may be busy in my life, but God, I need you again. I know you're spending a lot of time over here in this area, Lord God, but God wants and he has a desire to continue to do it again. He is faithful. God is so faithful that I love that my past doesn't disqualify me for what God wants to do in my life. That he, he's so faithful. Actually, God would say it this way because he's a redeeming God. That's his story. He's about redemption. As a matter of fact, your past doesn't disqualify you. Your past actually puts you in position for God to write a beautiful story for your life. Your past is actually in position so God can redeem you, you and your family, and set you in your rightful place, set you at his table so that you can eat from him right now. And now God wants to send you. Your past doesn't disqualify you. Your past puts you in position to be used by God. Never allow the enemy to say that your past disqualifies you. Because more and more I look at my story I just continue to see his thumbprints all through my life. That even when you didn't recognize him, he was still moving. Even when you didn't acknowledge him, he was still moving. Even when you wasn't saved and you wasn't giving your life to him, my God, he was still moving, touching, protecting We don't even know the degree of the things that was coming our way that the God would begin to withstand and block and intercept in your life. God has always been faithful and covering you even when you didn't even know it. I know that's bad English. I apologize. But he's faithful. But he's faithful. 
And I'm also reminded today about your story. Your story has weight. Your story has weight. Your story has value. That even when it comes to weight, here's why I say that. Because the presence of God is weighty. That, that his presence is weighty. It, it actually reminds me in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 10, it says, when the priest withdrew from the holy place, the cloud filled the temple of the Lord, and the priest could not perform their service because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled his temple. In other words, the priests were in the temple worshiping, ministering to God. And that his presence began to fill the temple to the point that it was so heavy that they couldn't even stand. Amen. They had to get down and acknowledge that they didn't feel worthy to stand in his, in his presence. Because his, his weight was so heavy that they, the only thing to do is to just bow and give myself to you. See, when we recognize God has been moving in our life, we will understand that his presence is always heavy. It's actually to our degree to recognize that his weight is heavy. Because here's what worship is. Worship is not us getting God attention to make sure that he recognizes that we're in a room. We don't come in here and say, God, look at me. I'm worshiping you. I don't feel the goosebumps yet, God. Ryan didn't play the right song. He didn't sing the right song. God, I want you to, I want you to recognize that I'm worshiping you. That's not worship. Worship is us recognizing that God is always in the room. That he's always here. It's not us trying to get God's attention to say, God, I'm lifting up my hands. I'm praising you. No, it's us saying, you know what? I recognize that you're omnipresent, that you're always with me no matter where I'm going. Maybe it's on a Sunday morning. Maybe you're looking at this Wednesday night in your bed. It doesn't matter where you find yourself. He's always there. So when we look at our life, hear this. God is always there. God is always there. Even in your past, God is always there and it's weighty and it's weighty. Look at this. Look in the text. He told them to pick up the stone, put it on your shoulders. In in actuality, if you look at the geographic, they they, they at least had to walk a mile, if not four or five miles, depending on where they actually camped at. So they actually had to cross the Jordan River pick up the stone and actually walk to Gilgal, what could have been at least one mile or maybe four or five miles. And what that lets me know that it was a stone. It was had some weight. They had to put it on their shoulders. And he said, carry it to where you're going. Don't leave your stone here. Don't leave what I just did here. Don't leave the breakthrough of where you see my hand move in your life right here. I need you to pick it up and take it with you. Everywhere that you go, take your stone with you. Everywhere that you go, take your story with you. When you're going on your job, take your stone with you. You. When you're around your family, take your stone with you. When you're around your friends, take your stone with you. Each and every way that you go is your stone with you. Or are you just leaving it back where you saw God move in your life five years ago, ten years ago? Yeah, he, he moved back then, but I left my stone, I left my story back there. And God is saying, no, pick up your stone, put it on your shoulder, and walk and tell. Can you imagine a priest? My God, they're walking, and, and each and every one of them is saying, what, what are those stones? Why do you have those stones? Here's one of the greatest revelations you can have about your story. It's to actually know the why behind your story. One of the greatest revelations that you can have is to actually understand the why I went through that. Yes. See, a lot of us, we actually don't even get the privilege of receiving that revelation. And if God gives it to you, that is a blessing 
to understand that in that season of my life, I went through it, and now God gives me the revelation that I need. I understand it, and when now I did I understand it, many of us leave this life not understanding the why behind our story. One of the greatest questions you can ask God right now is say, God, God, why? Just tell me why, God. Just tell me why. Even if you don't tell me why, I'll still bless you. I'll still, I'll still lift up your name. I'll still serve you. But God, just tell me why. What do these stones mean? They mean that God is faithful. It means that God is worthy. It means that God has seen you through. So point number three for the last point, your story has power. Understand your story has power. Revelations 12 and 11 says this. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. See, understanding that your story has power to actually send you and equip you rather than bring you down. That your story is not here to hinder you, but your story is actually to propel you into the very thing that God has called you to. See, the enemy will actually want to use your story as shackles to actually paralyze you that you can't even move. To say that, you know what, what happened 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago is the reason why you can't cross over. But when we begin to own our story and say, God, you know what? I'm an overcomer. My family is an overcomer. And the very thing that was meant to hinder you will actually be the trampoline to you to propel you into the very thing that God is calling you. Could it be that there's a woman that you don't even know that's going through the same thing that you went through five years ago? Could it be a brother that's going through the same thing that I went through that I don't even know. But and when I lean into my story and begin to share it, we don't even know who or when is touching somebody to change their destination. Yes. Your story is a bridge. It's a doorway for the kingdom of God for somebody. Could it be that God wants to use your story so that somebody can walk through that doorway? Your story has power. I wrote this down as we get ready to close out. At any given moment, you have the power to say, this is not how my story is going to end. Yeah, yeah. Go, we, 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 yeah. I know, I know we got to reteach. I know, I know the pandemic got to clap. There we go. But I want us to embrace that. I'm learning how to embrace it. So yes, when I'm up here preaching, I'm, I'm preaching to myself. At any given moment, you have the power to say, Anthony, your story does not end like this. Anthony, your family story does not end like this. You have the power to say, God, whatever happened, I give you the glory, and I know you're still writing a beautiful story. The beauty of God's story is this. My bishop used to say this, that at, at the end, we already read it. We know we have the victory. When we turn to Revelations, we already understand we have the victory. Yes. That the final scene, that the final chapter of your life has already been written. Breaking news. You won. Yes. You won. Yes. Come on, receive that today. You won. Yes. I know what it might look like in the middle of your story right now, but you are a winner. You won. Breaking news. You won. So hang in there. Don't quit. Keep walking. Keep trusting. Keep loving. 
keep going after the very thing that God has calling you. Why? Because you won. So if I could just hang in there in a weary season of not seeing the other chapter, but in due season, if you don't weep, if you don't faint, you won't, you will get the reward that God is getting ready to do in your life. So don't weep, don't faint, don't give up. Just keep trusting and move on with God is calling you to. Why? Because you're a winner. My online family, you're a winner. You're a winner. You are an overcomer. I want to close with this scripture. It's found in Psalms 102, verse 18. It says, let this be recorded for a generation to come so that a people yet to be created, my God, may praise the Lord for a generation that hasn't even been created. God is saying, I want you to record what, I'm, what I have done in your life so that others can see and read and hear so that they can praise his name. Could it be that God wants you to share your story so that other generations that haven't even been created yet will praise the Lord? Amen. 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 Bow our heads. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is increasing our faith even right now. Yet even in our story, we see your beauty. We see your hand moving. That you have always been there with us. So we even repent even right now, Lord God, where we didn't get it right where we didn't acknowledge you. We didn't even recognize that you have been here the whole time. But we're so grateful that even right now, our hearts are in a right place and we praise your name. So maybe there's somebody that's in here right now. If it's you, just want to pray for you. Maybe you came in here today and this word is speaking to you even about your story. Maybe you've been the one that's neglecting your story. Maybe you've been the one that's, you believe that your story has hindered you. It's been shackles to my feet. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that, that those shackles be loosened today. That by the power of God, you have already been redeemed. By the power of God that your story is part of God's story and what was meant for bad, what was meant for evil, that his word says that he would turn it into good for you. So even right now, Father God, we ask that you touch that individual right now. Whether it's in person or whether they're online right now, maybe they were in a season right now where they're just feeling stuck. They're feeling paralyzed. They're feeling that there's no movement and all because of their past. God, we're praying that even right now, Lord God, that you will reveal yourself to them. You will share your love with them like never before. You will begin to speak with them like never before. Matter of fact, God, begin to show them everything, even glimpses of what you have in store in the future with them. Let them not give up, but let them lean on you that they will see that you've been faithful, that they can see that their story has power, that they can see that their story has meaningful, that it's meaningful, that it has value, you and that you have a, a calling for them. We honor you for that. We praise you for that. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And maybe as we have one more prayer, maybe as we talk about the relationship with Jesus Christ, whether that's in person or even for our online family, I want to invite you into this prayer. We call it prayer of salvation. That even for your story, the story is always beautiful. Why? Because God has given us the opportunity to an everlasting relationship with him. And that's only possible through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. 
So maybe, maybe that's a, a prayer or something that you never did before. Or maybe because of your story, you drifted away, but God is calling you back. And maybe God wants to write a new chapter in your life today that, that you God is saying, it's time to rededicate yourself. The most beautiful thing you can ever do is give God your yes. So even I want to invite you in time for a prayer of salvation. Our church family is going to join in as well. Just knowing that you have a community that's praying right alongside of you right now. Just repeat these words after me. Jesus, we love you. We acknowledge you. You are my Lord and Savior. I repent. I am a sinner. But I announce you as my Lord and Savior. Live in me. Breathe in me all the days of my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen, amen. Come on, as we get ready to go back into worship family, and maybe you're in or online or in person, I want to invite you to what we call our Connect Card. One of the greatest ways to get connected here at Celebration Church. So maybe if you're here in person before you leave, please, please hear my heart swing by our Connect Station. Got a wonderful team that would love to meet with you, answer any questions that you may have. If you're online, please go through the website. Fill out the digital connect card. Our family would love to hear from you. Pray with you. But here is mostly importantly, walk with you. We love you guys so much.